Hi, my name is Rob Colts, and I'm the clinical director with Overjet and a practicing dentist. And I'm really excited today to be able to talk to you about artificial intelligence and its impact and, and how it's transforming dental care. Now, artificial intelligence is something that we're all impacted by an immense amount through our interactions through companies like Netflix, Facebook, Google, Tesla. The amount of our interactions with artificial intelligence is much more significant than we realize. Now, in healthcare and specifically dentistry, the impact can even be more life-changing. I'd like today to talk about three areas where artificial intelligence is really impacting dentistry and how it's going to really change how you deliver dental care in your practices. So the first one I'd like to talk about is standardization. What I mean by standardization is how doctors and clinicians can have a uniform set of objective measurements that they use when delivering dental care. The second area in which artificial intelligence is impacting our delivery of dental care is through improving our diagnosis. So not just standardizing it, but making us more confident and competent in our diagnosis. And the third aspect I'd like to talk about today is how artificial intelligence can really increase and improve the case acceptance that we experience as we have conversations with our patients. So I'd like to start with a story. And this story is not my own personal story, but it is a true story. And it's the story of a young lady who had been going to a dentist for a, a number of years and had your usual restorative treatment plans. A couple of fillings, every few appointments, nothing major. Uh, but then to a change of insurance and life circumstances, her, she was forced to go to another dentist at her next visit. And when she went to that dentist, she got a treatment plan that surprised her with seven or eight different cavities diagnosed, and, and the question she had was, why didn't my last dentist see these? Or why did my new dentist see these? And which one is right? Was one dentist underdiagnosing? Was the other dentist overdiagnosing? And, and really the question was, how can she as a patient make a decision and know which dentist was, was providing the more accurate or more appropriate treatment plan? And the reality is either one of those dentists could have had an appropriate treatment plan, but how was she as a patient supposed to know? That patient's name is Warda Inam, and she would go on to found and be the CEO of Overjet, which is the largest provider of artificial intelligence services in dentistry in the United States. Now, not all of our patients have the ability to go on to found an AI company to help provide standardization and clarity on their treatment planning issues, but all of our patients face similar questions. Now, let's take that story and let's apply this to a more scientific experiment. What you're seeing in front of you now is an image that was shown to 75 licensed dentists. Now, they were seeing the image without those blue boxes labeled. The blue boxes were added later by Overjet's AI services, which labeled caries on the x-ray. And we asked those 75 dentists to take that raw x-ray and within the computer software that they were given to place a blue box around caries, um, primary caries, excuse me, and place a yellow box around secondary or recurrent caries. And as you can see, the results of that are that every single tooth and almost every single surface was diagnosed by at least one dentist as requiring treatment. Now, this is the impact and the, and, and the experience that our patients are having daily as they come into our offices. And so the question is, how are they, without having any prior dental education, supposed to know which treatment plan and which doctor they can trust and, and which is the most accurate treatment plan that they're receiving? Now. I want to take this experiment and I, and I want to take this a step farther and I want to give to you this hypothetical example. So let's say you're sitting in your office and your hygienist comes in after taking x-rays on a new patient and she says that she's got Bob Smith in the chair and that Mr. S Mr. Smith has generalized four and five millimeter pockets on the right quadrants and moderate bleeding on probing. I want you to think for a moment with that diagnostic criteria, what is your treatment plan? What, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? And obviously we're, we only have a small sample of information, but often this is what we're given as we're sitting there in our office and, and, and needing to make these decisions. So for most clinicians and most hygienists and doctors, you start thinking scaling and root planing. You start thinking with this sort of clinical criteria, I must need scaling and root planing. So now let's add in a little bit more information. Let's add in an x-ray. So what we see here is a bite wing that's been overlaid with Overjet's AI findings on top of it. Now, let's think about the diagnostic criteria for scaling and root planing. Dental insurance companies, for example, and this is following for the most part the AAP, the American Academy of Periodontology's guidelines, require two things in order to accept and approve payment for scaling and root planing. First of all, they require that there's some sign of an inflammatory process, and that's measured by your hygienist through her periodontal charting. And the second thing that almost every dental insurance requires is signs of radiographic bone loss. Now, what you're seeing on this x-ray is bone level measurements that Overjet has automatically calculated on this x-ray, 
measuring from CEJ to the crustal bone. And so what we have here isn't, isn't bone loss necessarily, but this is a bone level measurement. And how do we determine when it becomes bone loss? Well, for that, we have to go to the literature. And we know by looking at the literature that no evidence of radiographic bone loss or what we would call biological normality is 0.4 to 1.9 millimeters from the CEJ to the crustal bone. So in this, in this instance, do we meet the criteria? Do we have radiographic bone loss and do we have inflammatory process? And the answer to that would likely be no. We, ha we have periodontal probing depths, but there's really no bone loss on the x-ray. So is scaling and root plane in this particular case an appropriate treatment plan? So now I want to take a step back and let's talk about what we just did there. That process that we just went through is called standardization. So we, we created a set of criteria based off probing depths and bone level measurements that we can use to apply standardized uniform principles to diagnosis on our patients. So now as you go through this process, and you can do this on a number of different procedures, you can do this on caries detection and size of lesions through the enamel, assisted by artificial intelligence to help you more accurately quantify where those are on the teeth. And if you think about going through this process with your hygienist and creating criteria for probing depths and bone level measurements that in your practice would equate to a patient needing scaling and root planing, think of how much more of an, of an experience and better experience your hygienist and more importantly, your patients are having by having a standardized process. So that's the first area in which artificial intelligence can really help improve your practice. The second area is on your diagnosis. And now when I say diagnosis in, with artificial intelligence, we're not talking about the quantity of the diagnosis, we're talking about the quality of the diagnosis. So if we look at in dentistry, how much, how much restorative and periodontal treatment goes undiagnosed, the amount is significant. Now, most patients would think if you surveyed them that there's an overdiagnosis problem in, in dental practices, that they go in and they get diagnosed with more procedures than they actually need. But the reality is if we look at the x-rays and we look at the literature, underdiagnosis is a much larger problem. In fact, 28% of restorative treatment goes undiagnosed and almost two thirds, 60% of periodontal disease goes undiagnosed. So how can artificial intelligence help with our diagnosis? How can it help us more appropriately and, and adequately diagnose our patients? For that, let's look at a couple of x-rays. So this is an example of bite wing x-rays, of course. And I want you just to take a moment and look at it and, and identify in your mind things that jump out to you. Maybe it's the quantity of the subgingival calculus. Maybe it's the caries on the mesial three, distal on four, uh, something certainly going on on the mesial of number 19. A and as you're going through this process, this is what you were trained in dental school to do. You were trained to look at black and white x-rays, identify areas of disease, and then mark them for treatment. Now, I want you to think about how, how adding artificial intelligence analysis on top of that x-ray impacts your ability to detect decay. Now, this was not necessarily a fair experiment because you were looking at it through uh, th this sort of webinar-based environment, and in your own monitor, you'd be able to adjust the hue and the saturation and enlarge things. But walking into a treatment room with the AI findings overlaid on top of the x-rays and turning them on and off and comparing, we found that doctors on average will diagnose about 22% more restorative procedures than doctors who don't use an artificial intelligence software. And again, the goal of AI is not to get you to diagnose more, but it is to get you to diagnose more accurately and more confidently. And so by using artificial intelligence, we can help augment our process and help help ensure that we're not missing things that, that sometimes during maybe a, a hurried exam at the end of the day, or um, you, you're busy in your other chair and, and you, you don't necessarily mean to miss these things on the x-ray, but sometimes we do. And artificial intelligence can help us minimize our amount of disease that we're missing on these x-rays. And the third thing I'd like to talk about, about how artificial intelligence can help us in our dental practices is through case acceptance. So case acceptance uh, in dentistry, unfortunately, is very low. So on an established patient who has a relationship with you, on average, about 52% is the nationwide case acceptance level from an established patient. And the number, of course, goes down significantly on a new patient. Now, think about why that is. Why, does it, why do only 30% of the, the treatment that we diagnose, why does only 30% get, get accepted by new patients? A lot of people think it's because of cost, that it's a financial burden. Now, finances certainly plays a role in that process, but the reality is that the number one reason that patients don't accept treatment is a lack of trust in their providers. They don't trust that the treatment plan is in their best interest. They don't trust that the accurate and, and adequate diagnosis was made. That's the number one reason. And so how can artificial intelligence help with that issue? 
For that, let's look at another set of x-rays. Now, this set of bite wings was actually sent to me by a DSO with the complaint that the, the patient was upset and complained about the number of cavities that had been diagnosed by the provider. And they wanted to see if an artificial intelligence platform like Overjet could help in that process. And so as you're looking at this x-ray, th there, there's not a lot of major things that jump out at you. There's a, a couple areas, areas of interproximal decay. But think of this from a patient standpoint. This is what your patient is being exposed to. What information does your patient glean from these x-rays? The, the answer is almost none, right? So a, a lot of doctors, and myself included many times, won't even show x-rays to their patients because the, the amount of information the patient gets is really insignificant. And an intraoral photo, for example, typically was, would become the new gold standard. Well, now what if you could show your patient this set of x-rays with artificial intelligence findings overlaid on top of those x-rays? How much more significant and how much more of a story does this give your patients than the unannotated images? Now, your patient isn't a doctor, of course. They may not understand necessarily what they're seeing. They may not recognize what the treatment recommended is going to be by looking at these x-rays. But when they see this area with, with areas of yellow, meaning incipient caries, and areas of, of red, meaning caries through the de-enamel, they recognize that there is going to be some sort of conversation, that, that something is present on these x-rays, that when the doctor comes and talks to them about these x-rays, there will be a less surprise at the treatment plan that's given them. And it's, it acts as a, as a second set of eyes for them. So they have this unbiased, objective observer who can help them look at these x-rays. So these are the three areas where artificial intelligence is really poised to help you in your practices. Number one, being standardization among your clinical providers. Number two, being improving your diagnosis. And number three, increasing the case acceptance in your practice. Thank you.